Welcome to the Echo Ratings Eventing Podcast and listeners, the next episode in the Inside Maryland series. Now, today's guest, I'm going to welcome him to the show. It's been a little while since we've had him on the Eventing Podcast, in fact, but he made the trip to Maryland last year. He had a top 10 finish and he is planning to make the trip again. How much higher can he go on that leaderboard, listeners? Uh, I don't think there would be a more popular winner. Harry Mead, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you for having me. It is very good to have you back on the show. Um, first of all, I guess... No, last, last time I was on the show, I think I interrupted. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I, I I rang the number to talk to Sam or you or something, and you were mid-record, sort of halfway through an interview with someone and recording it, and I suddenly appeared on the line that I joined the call, and you then got me to stay on for the rest of the show, which was slightly <laughs> embarrassing. I do remember that actually and we kind of threw you in at the deep end and we just started we just involved you um and we just started asking you questions on who was going to win I can't remember what show that was now um I might look it I'll look it back up listeners I'll link it in this podcast so if you want to relive go for a walk down memory lane you can relive it it's well worth it actually it was very funny okay first of all I guess let's just set the scene so you headed out to Maryland last year what made you want to make the trip to a brand new five star in the US back in 2021? So my, my plan in the spring was to go to badminton. And when badminton uh, cancelled because of COVID, we, at short notice, rerouted to Kentucky, which obviously I, I was coming off the back of a bang on the head. And so it started late. Um, and it was a few weeks earlier than badminton. So um, that sort of was quite a sort of uh, short notice call. Um, and we had a great time in Kentucky. And then when Burley cancelled um, in the autumn, uh, straight away, we thought, well, let's let's go to Maryland. And it was really fun. We absolutely loved it. Um, it was a real adventure. And, you know, life's all about the journey. Um, and it's obviously you have, you know, you have aims to do well at the big five stars, but you also want to enjoy the moment and there's nothing more enjoyable than going on one of those big expeditions um and the americans know how to put on an amazing event uh it's it's really exciting great atmosphere um we are looked after so well and yeah my, my plan had been to, to uh well i didn't envisage myself going back again so soon but you know uh, a series of events meant that um it, it was the obvious one to try and aim for this autumn um, when you went to Kentucky at the start of last year, that was your first big US trip abroad, wasn't it? It was, yeah, yeah. That's, I, I was really surprised by that, but I guess um, just circumstance have kind of meant Babington's, Burleys, that kind of thing. How did how did the US five stars over Kentucky, Maryland differ to the Babington's, the Burleys? Uh, so I've always very much prioritised um, Badminton and Burley. So I've been to Badminton, I think, 11 times and, and Burley, you know, not, not a dissimilar number. And so, you know, including Lemoon and Poe, I've sort of ridden to them comparatively fewer times because I've always targeted the, the horses for, for those those British ones. Um, and I'd say that I'd say that the, the US ones were were not that dissimilar. I, I thought there was a there was a really lovely atmosphere of both. Um sort of very, very welcoming. Uh they 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 were just, you know, you definitely knew you were at a big event. They weren't just um given a, a big title of a five star um and then put on a show without without the atmosphere and and and, and, and without the occasion. Um it, it definitely felt like you were at a really big one and everyone was super excited to be there. Um, and considering both of them happened in sort of some sort of COVID uh, restriction, there were actually, there was still in spite of that, you know, plenty of people around and, and lots going on. So, uh, yeah, I think, I think in terms of the courses, in terms of the park and the terrain, um, they, they felt like, you know, really proper, like true five stars. And, you know, that's, that's, that's what we want to try and ride at. That is what we are aiming for. What was your first impression of Maryland last year when you went? Yeah, I was pretty blown away by the, you know, the, the facilities that they put in. You know, they, they, they so it takes place in the middle of a race course, and unlike um, uh, sort of British or Irish race courses, um, you know, which are often sort of old historic sites and undulations and different cambers, and you're know, just you know making the most of open space, but definitely not a flat isotropic surface you know the the, the u.s race courses tend to be 
much more like an athletics track. Um, and in the middle of it, uh, th- they've got the main arena, which has got a, a big grandstand around it. Um, and you know, it's, it's a really good, really good surface. And then there's two huge arenas, and I think there's plans to build more um, for, for the warm-up arena. So the facilities are really good. But I think the big thing w- was that the park uh, where the cross-country happens is – yeah, it, it's it's wonderfully gently undulating, so it's not it's not like a roller coaster where you're you know, zooming up and down steep banks and twisting around in small circles. It's just it, it's just got a really great um, vibe to it, where you where you you know, got good galloping stretches, but undulations, just gradual undulations. So it's definitely a fitness test for the horses, um, but it also allows them to get into a proper galloping rhythm, and yeah, you know, it's, it's a rewarding course to ride around. And actually, on that, listeners, if you haven't already listened to the first Inside Maryland podcast with uh, Joni Morris and Jeff Newman, go and listen to it because it gives you a bit of an insight as to what changes we might see for this year. We'll link it in the show notes, um, but go and check it out because that will give you a real kind of flavour as to what we might see differently for this year. Start and finish has been moved, that kind of thing. So um, I guess coming on to this year, Harry, when was the decision made and how was the decision made that actually you would be heading back. I mean, you were seventh last year, so it was obviously a very successful trip. So when did you decide that actually Maryland was going to be your plan and big aim this autumn? Uh, so so the, um, the horse we took last year is the same, same chap we're taking back, Superstition, and he uh he was due to i was weighing up whether we went to kentucky or badminton this spring and um he then threw a splint behind which was very frustrating so i backed off brought him back you know he started galloping again it flared up again backed off again and then it became apparent that you know he he was going to miss too much work to get to either so we backed off completely and then thought well what's the autumn going to look like and i wanted i was keen for this not to be an ongoing niggly thing so we we decided to give him a long enough break that it would settle down and then we could have a proper campaign but that would probably mean after missing the spring season and starting the autumn campaign a little bit late that was realistically going to put him uh too late on the starting line to get fit enough for burley um so it then meant uh pearl or maryland and i talked to Mandy, his owner, and you know, she when I mentioned Maryland, she said, "Well, if that's if that's on the cards, that'll be great fun." And yeah, you know, we, we we loved it last year, and um, let's go there. And so, about superstition, give us a little insight into him because he is a really cool little horse. I know he has a huge number of fans on the circuit. Give us a bit of a, a background on him, what he is like at home, and kind of how preparation has gone for this year. So he's he's a very cool little horse. He's he's quite small. He's probably sixteen hand, sixteen one. He's a relatively lightweight horse. He's he's quite compact and he does everything. He goes cross country in a rubber snaffle. He's a real little yeah, just like a bouncy ball in terms of his jumping. Um, he'd be he'd be quite a sensitive horse to ride. And but he's you know he obviously we've sort of uh, developed you know decent amount of experience in terms of you know he's now done yeah he's having done Kentucky and and married and last time it'll be nice to go back with him as a more experienced horse now um and also you you, you head into these events not quite knowing what they're going to be like and how the horse is going to cope with not just the travel but the trip of the cross-country course as well and it's always it's always a boost when you've had a good run and you can um you can know a little bit more what you're heading into next time his cross country round at Maryland last year, I think, is one of my favourite cross country moments from 2021 because he was so quick, so economical, but he made it look so smooth. And didn't you go? You were so up on your clock that you just kind of poodled around the long route at the last water. Yes, yeah, and um, it was. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, I think for, for the event they did an amazing job. I think you know the one thing was probably the time was was on the more lenient side but hopefully this year it'll be be more of a challenge um yeah we want we want to sort of feel that the the training and the work you put in at home is going to be tested and and pay off and stand you in good stead so um yeah it's it's great it's great that he finished so well and 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 i remember thinking you know one of one of the positives was 
it, you know, hopefully it took very little out of him. You know, it, 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 it's not like a horse being flat to the boards and um, tired and fatigued and putting a lot of pressure on their limbs. You know, when they, when they go around in balance and um, never really hurrying. Uh, you know, hopefully they come out of it, come out of it well, and um, you know they, you've sort of used used less of them up. It was interesting because while he definitely made it look straightforward, it was he made it look deceivingly easy because, yes, the time was very gettable, but there were plenty of horses there that definitely didn't make the time look straightforward and finished a little bit tired. He just kind of cantered through the finish, looking <laughs> as fresh as a daisy. In terms of your preparation, obviously the, the start of the season got off to a little bit of a slower start than you would have liked, but how have your last couple of prep runs been for Maryland this year? I saw him at Hartbury and he looked absolutely super and had a very steady cross country round there um I think he's been over to Mill Street have you got any more plans or are you very happy with the work that that's kind of in the locker already yeah I'm happy with him I mean he's not a horse who runs very often last year when he went, went to Maryland he, he didn't run for 12 weeks in the run up to it and um yeah he, he went really well off that so he's, he's not a horse who I'd give a huge amount of runs to um it just you know we sort of have our our plan and process, which you know, would involve quite a bit of test riding at home. You're going to some show jumping shows, going to some dressage competitions. Um, you know, I wouldn't rely on the events from a fitness point of view. We'd, we'd do that, do all the you know, fitness work at home, um, and you'd have a few cross country schools and and head off. So, you know, it, it's always a relief when you get your last run out the way. I, th- I think the two sort of moments that, that you can breathe a bit. One is after they've trotted up sound the day after their final prep run and the other is when they trust up sound um after their final final gallop uh before they go to a three day so um it is nice to have to have got the final prep run out of the way um a couple of months <laughs> out from the event uh and then it's sort of you know it's a case of just hopefully um putting the finishing touches on and um yeah and heading out there who do you train with at home harry i don't think i've ever asked you this or so um so Ian Woodhead um okay the magician and, yeah I was uh, he, he came down today and we worked together and he does a great job he trains obviously a lot of the Brits and he's he's a bit of a mercenary so he'd, he'd be he'd be, be a gun for high he'd be with you know, helping the, the, you know he used to help the Irish he's helping the Dutch he's helping some of the American riders um yeah, I've probably missed a whole load, but and he, and you he, can always tell though when somebody that he's been helping with trots down the centre line because all of a sudden the marks keep dropping. Like he's, yeah. he's very, very, very good. Okay. Yeah, really good, really good. And he's yeah, you know, he's very good at reading reading an individual horse and um you know work, working out the right key for that for that horse. And so yes, yeah, so, and and then um, jumping wise, um, I've been working with Grant Wilson um, actually just for, just for the last twelve months. So. Um, yeah, that's been, and, and, and he's been brilliant. He's got a lovely way with the horses, very, very soft. And, um, you know, it's all about, you know, getting them relaxed and using themselves in an athletic way and, you know, building some, some lines that are sort of more, I, I guess, looking to the current and future type of course design we see in show jumping nowadays. Um, and, yeah, just it's it's a re- it's a really lovely way of way of working horses. Very 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 soft and athletic. And um, what about the the actual trip out there? So, how far out from Maryland will Superstition kind of make his trip? Who's going with him? Who's in your support team? And and kind of what? How do the logistics differ? Obviously, from just jumping in the track and popping five ten minutes down the road to Babington because little bit further afield yeah and, and last year we had the headache of having to get a waiver from the uk government to leave uh, and a waiver <laughs> from the us government to arrive uh, in the us uh, during lockdown um and yes yeah, so, so they go they go normally sort of a week before the horse inspection so say say wednesday um before the whole event kicks off and we we had uh we had a bit of a stressful time because I think the day we were meant to fly last year, I was on the gallops at I think about five o'clock in the morning, or may, maybe it was. The day, I think it was the day we, we, they were going to travel. I was on the gallops at about five o'clock in the morning, finished the gallop. The idea was that he was then going to yeah go back, chill out in the stable for a little bit, go in the field for a bit, and then head off to the airport. And we got a phone call to say the flight had been cancelled uh, because there was a problem with the plane, and there was no other flight that was rescheduled. So there was a sort of um, 
you know, there were lots of people in the travel industry who were trying to find a replacement flight. Uh, hopefully, we won't have that problem again this time. But it meant that we ended up having to get the horses out to Frankfurt, um, and then they flew from there. Whereas we're hoping this time to to fly from Stansted, um, and you know that, that, that's obviously a much much easier journey this side. Um, they then, when they arrive, they they quarantine um, and they quarantine for four um, days. Four days. Yeah, four days. Which is can, which is can actually. They be ridden or no, are they, no. they don't come out of their stables. It's it's a really it's it's a real headache for you know the management of the horses. Obviously, the worst thing for horses uh, that are that are really fit. And prepped and ready to go is then being totally stationary because there's a risk that they tie up, they get astrea um, when they start work again. So they generally come out of quarantine and, and there's, a I think, a pretty long road trip. We're quarantining, I think, at the same um, facility as we did for uh, Kentucky, so a different one from uh, where we did for Maryland last year. Um, but it then means it's a long road trip uh, to get to Maryland. So on top of all of that, you know, they, they stay they stand on the tarmac at the airport for quite a long time before they're loaded onto a flight. They have the flight, they have the quarantine, and then they have a long road trip. And by the time they get there, they tend to be totally off their heads. You've obviously cut out all their hard food. Completely wild. Completely wild. Um, and you can't get work into them because there's a risk of them tying up. So you have to sort of just get them out of their box little and often get them moving. And it's always quite a relief when you've got the first couple of days out of the way, you know, which you'd start off walking in hand, you'd, you'd then hack them a little bit, um, then start with a little bit of light, you know, trot and canter. Um, and then hopefully when, they, when they've done a bit, then their OK starts with some more normal work. And then once they've done some normal work, they're hopefully out of the woods in terms of, you know, they, they've burnt off any energy that they're then not likely to tie up. And it, will it be your head girl? Is it Jess Errington who will yeah. be heading out with him? Brilliant Jess, who's been... And she's been um, with you for years, hasn't she? She's been with us for 15 years. Um, Amazing. And I should say us, uh, it was sort of me because <laughs> I was sort of... Uh, I think she came uh, She came along, um, I think, about pretty much to the month, the same time as Rosie did. Um, okay. <laughs> um, uh, my wife, Rosie. Um, so... <laughs> Um, yeah, J- Jess is absolutely brilliant. She's she's amazing with the horses. Um, she totally adores them, and she she's so so good with them. So she's she she will travel um, travel at the same time, and then be as involved as as, as they'll let her be in quarantine, um, and then obviously ready to receive him as soon as he comes out of there. And when will you head over? I'll be there when he arrives at the event. Okay. Uh, I'll go straight to the event uh, because yeah. I can't do anything with him in quarantine. So once he gets to the event, uh, I think I'll get there a few hours later, um, and then hopefully, you know, we can just start off. It's always nice to get there early, and I, I think for those big ones, yeah, you know, I, I used to sort of rush straight from one event to, an, to another. I always try now for the five stars if I can not to compete the weekend before, um, just so you're not um, coming straight off the back of something, and you, know, you can hopefully give it your your full full attention. Not chasing about. And obviously, going over to America is very different. For anybody that doesn't know where you're based in the UK, you're a stone's throw from badminton. So I imagine right all business. manner of, yeah, exactly. All manner of friends, family, neighbours, you know, the guy from down the village, they all come out to support you. So heading out to Maryland is a little bit different. Who will be in the support team heading out there this year? So it'll be quite small. So 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 we'll have um, Mandy Gray, who owns um, Superstition, um, and she's really sort of, uh, it, it's, it's such fun when we all head out together. We're, we're great friends, and we we take a house, which um, sort of Mandy's in charge of uh, the logistics of, in a way, looking after everyone. Um, and, you know, she, she's brilliant. Um, if you landed on the moon and said, I feel like going to an Italian restaurant with a hint of, uh peruvian <laughs> food uh, she'd find one within about three minutes uh with five star reviews um and we, Rosie, all, need, we all need somebody like that in our lives totally totally exactly. she's, a, she's, yeah. she, she's she's somebody who makes it happen yeah um and then rosie rosie will come and um and then jess and molly who are the two senior members of the team on the yard and you know if it's you know if, if it's a slightly sensitive horse um you know then we can it's, it's great they can both be there and um yeah hopefully give them the full works I was gonna say it's nice for the team as well actually isn't it because everybody works week in week out at home 
And ultimately, the big ones, the five stars, this is why everybody does it. Totally. And, and you know, they've been just such big parts in the horse's career and, you know, really pouring themselves into his performances as much as any of us are. Um, and, you know, it's, it's totally right that they should be there for the big moments. And, yeah, it's great fun. There's, 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 there's a lot of hard work, uh, you know, on a rainy Monday morning, um, you know, sort of out of season time of year. And then, you know, the chance to go to those big ones is great. And, and I also think that, you know, you can make it, you know, if you have a really fun time, you know, it probably helps performance. But actually it also, that there's, there's more to life than just results on paper. In terms of the results on paper, to put you on the spot, if we were to speak a week after Maryland this year, what would you be hoping for? Oh, um, so yeah, really, the, I guess the boring answer to that question is just execute the plan. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what's the plan, Harry? What's the, the plan? plan? That's what we the want to plan know. The should, should be able to um, produce a... <laughs> there is uh, a bright smile on his face. Yeah, I know, just, just, just <laughs> a... a, a, a uh, I was going to use something sufficiently ambiguous, but a, a but a um, a meaningful result, and yeah, we'll see what that is. You know, there's there's you get the rub of the green or the bounce of the ball in the sport, but if all goes to plan, you know, he's had a good run up to it, and you know, hopefully, hopefully, you know, if we can try and nail all three phases, um, you know, he was fifth, he was fifth for Kentucky, you know, he won his four star longest drag, he was fifth for Kentucky, his first five star, he was seventh in Maryland, and probably the time slightly. Um, affected that that result, you know, that he could have been maybe you know close or on the podium if if it had been a, a sort of really tough time. Um, so yeah, we'll see. I mean, hope, hopefully, hopefully, I just won't won't drop the ball and fall off the fence too. Uh, please don't, Harry. Please don't. We don't. <laughs> we don't even. Those words will not come out of your mouth again between now and after Maryland. Okay, absolutely not. Um, what are you most looking forward to? you know we've talked about why why the team does this and everything else but ultimately you know the five stars are, have been what what drive you so what are you most looking forward to yeah i i think it, it it totally um you know i guess everyone has different aims and motivations and and, and why they do it for me it's, it's it's about the five stars and and you're trying to find those horses and then when when you when you have any horse in your yard is trying to basically make them every day be a better horse you know, you, I say, you know, you're, you're trying to everything we do is to try and make them a better horse so that um you know they hopefully have a chance to fulfill their their potential and and and, and be competitive at the five stars so I'm sort of very aware in the run-up to something like this that actually this is what it's all about it's not just another competition you I think a lot of people like to pacify any nerves by sort of saying oh it's just another event and for me it's absolutely not another event it's 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 the be all and end all of of the season and um yeah you you yeah I don't mind piling pressure on a bit and saying yeah this is this is the moment to to uh leave it all out there and get 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 everything lined up so you can deliver you know hopefully your best performance do you get nervous i get excited um i get i guess i'm aware that this is a one off situation that then you have to wait 6 months or however long to go to the next one you know all being well and you might not get there and you know, you hope the horse is going to be in one piece and um so it's it's more a case of really feeling there's a bit of pressure because it's all riding on this one performance. Um, do I get nervous? I I like to think that I probably enjoy it and increasingly so. Like compared to, I probably used to be more intense when I was younger about it. Now I'm able to still chat to the person who's letting you into the arena and the person who opens the boards to let you into the final dressage boards or that, you know, the starter yeah. who's you know about to set you off across country or the, the person who's holding the string up to keep the crowds back as you're going around and yeah you know, it's a case of um not having to be in in such a sort of tight tunnel vision to get that performance out but you're able to enjoy it and probably chat to a few people on the way around no oh, harry good luck honestly um there are so many people that would absolutely love to see you have a brilliant performance in maryland um so i hope that when you do have a brilliant performance on Maryland, you'll come back on the show and tell us all about it. And, and if, if I if I fall off a fence too, I promise you I'll come back on and tell you all about that. <laughs> as well. 
<laughs> I promise you won't. Um, look, Harry, good luck in Maryland. And I think it, it is going to be a fantastic event. Um, we're very much looking forward to it. I know there will be plenty of people cheering you on. So, yes, fingers crossed, all goes planned. Do not fall off at fence two. And we'll have you back on the show to hear all about it when you <coughs> are on the podium. Um, <laughs> there you go. Look, Harry, thank you. Good luck. Great to talk. Thanks for having me. And we'll talk soon. Now, my second guest on this show is one of the leading home favourites going into Maryland Five Star this year. And it is none other than the very lovely Liz Halliday Sharp. Liz, good to have you with us. Thank you for having me. <laughs> nice to be here. Um, first of all, we are you are currently on your way to an event. Um, so if reception drops out, listeners, we will do our best to get back on track. Um, but it is a, a unbelievably busy time of the year. So I guess, first of all, let's just chat uh, about Maryland, because you didn't go to the five star last year. But am I right in saying you did the test event? I did. I did the test event in 2020. So I suppose I've run on some of that ground. Um, obviously, it was just a three star. Um, and I've been in some of the arenas, but I'm, I understand everything has changed so much. So I'm really, really excited to see what it's all about, really. I mean, it's just amazing to have a second five star in the United States. And you also have two very, very good chances um, in De Niro's. Amazing to see him back, but also Cooley Quicksilver as well. I guess, first of all, let's start with De Niro Z because I, for one, am unbelievably excited to see him back because we haven't seen quite so much of him over the last couple of years. But he has just been such a top level contender for you. He's been top 15 at Burley. Um, he's been getting better and better and better. How has he been this season and how excited are you to have him back at, at what feels like it's a, a long, long awaited five star since he was top 10 at Kentucky last year? Yeah, no, it's wonderful to have him back. Um, I mean, De Niro and I have such a partnership, and um, he's just such a wonderful, giving horse. You know, he really loves his job, um, probably more than any horse I've ever ridden. And um, it was a real shame to, to miss out on our chance at Tokyo after being named for the team. Um, and it took him a little while to kind of find himself again, if that makes sense. So I've kind of given him time. You know, when a horse has um, some time off from the sport and they've never really had time off before, it's kind of hard for them to find their mojo again. Um, so I sort of gave him time this year, and I said to the owners, um, De Niro will tell us what he wants to do and um, sort of see how he goes. And um, each run, he's been better and better and feeling more like himself and, and really enjoying what he's doing. So um, it was our plan to go to Maryland. I had a really good, solid run at Plantation, and that was um, just this last weekend. And um, he's come out of that feeling great. So we're Fingers crossed we're um, back to where we need to be and um, hopefully we'll have a really great run there. All systems go in, in, in the right direction. Um, and what about Cooley Quicksilver as well? Because actually he also has a really good deal of five-star form under his belt as well now. Um, so two horses, two very, very good five-star horses. But Cooley Quicksilver this year has been in brilliant form. He won the four-star short in Kentucky. Um, he was fifth at Le Moulin. He came out and won um, at Great Meadow in the four-star short as well. But he just seems to be getting better and better. You know, I couldn't have two more different horses actually going. Cooley Quicksilver is such an interesting horse. I've had him from the very beginning of his career, um, same as De Niro. Um, and I've always sort of said he's my weird, wiggly, wonderful horse. He's um, he's a very odd character. He's extremely arrogant. He um, really loves his job. He's a fighter through and through. Um, this will be the most terrain he's sort of challenged before in a five-star, but he's only an 11-year-old, so he's still young, but he's actually done three five-stars already. Um, and he was outstanding at the Moulin. I couldn't have been more thrilled with him. Uh, obviously, my real hope had been that we would have been selected to go to Bertoni, and um, that was a, a huge disappointment with a horse that has been on top form this year. But um, our next step was to say it's time for him to step up and go to Maryland, and I really think he's ready. I think he's better than he's ever been in his life. Le Moulin really helped him to step up to sort of a whole new level in himself, and um, he's, uh, he's becoming a, a real professional now, which anybody who has known <laughs> this um, interesting character will sort of say, wow, he's actually becoming professional. That's exciting because <laughs> he is kind of a, a goofy, quirky character. But um, 
So I'm really excited to get him there and, and he feels on the forms of life. I love it. He's called Monster at Home, isn't he? <laughs> he is. Um, yeah. And not because he's a horrible person, just because he's um, he's a real goof and he's uh, just, you know, he'd happily just kind of chew on you out of nowhere. And uh, <laughs> he, If he was human, he would be triple jointed because he's the most flexible animal I've ever seen in my life. He can turn himself into a pretzel and just like scratch the top of his tail with no effort. Um, which makes him a, a wonderful athlete and also a challenge to ride all in one. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Um, and what about kind of having that second five star in Maryland? Because, I mean, you have competed at some of the biggest venues all over the world. So how how does a, a five star compare for you on, on home soil? And, and what does that mean for US eventing at that time of the year? I mean, I think it's outstanding. It couldn't be better for our sport. Um, Kentucky is such a phenomenal five-star, and it's, to have another one that's really vying to be one of the best in the world is, is very, very exciting, um, especially when at the end of the year, the only real option is Poe. And it's, I went to Poe last year, and it's, it's a brilliant event, and everybody should go because it's its own unique course, just like every five-star is, is a different sort of track. Um, but it's very, very difficult to get to from the United States. It's extremely expensive for us to go there. It's a long, long way south um, and just not really possible for a lot of people. So um, I think that having that second five star just gives these top five star horses another opportunity of the year, which we couldn't ask for better. Yeah, absolutely. I think even even those riders based over in Britain going to Poe find it a long way. Um, and that's without even the kind of the air traveling from coming over from the States to Europe. It just is. You can't underestimate how far down France it is. You just kind of keep on going. Um, and so the additional travel pressures and everything that it puts on horses coming over from the States. And as you say, the financial pressure of it as well is absolutely huge. Um, two very different horses, two very big chances. Have you got a, something in mind as actually you come away from, from Maryland and you'd like to... Uh, in fact, do you know what? I'm just going to say one, two, Liz. That's all you need. One, two. Two on the podium. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> It'd be pretty good. It'd be pretty good. <laughs> that would be pretty good. I mean, of course, um, you know, I want to go there and do well. I'm not, I'm not going there to do anything but, but well, I hope. I mean, I'm, I'm going there to have a crack. Um, I think they're both very good horses against two very different horses. Um, and I've obviously never been there. I didn't, well, other than the test event, but I've not ridden there for the five star last year. Um, I did watch it on the live stream, so that was useful, but I understand they've changed a lot of things, possibly for the better this year. And um, yeah, I'm just trying to get my horses as fit as possible. I know there's a lot of terrain and just try and have them in in the best shape of their life and as well prepared as we can. And I think they're both on track for that. Well, look, we cannot wait to see how you get on. Uh, Liz, thank you so much for giving us an insight into your pre-Maryland build-up and we'll wish you the very, very best of luck for the big one itself. Thank you so much. So there you have it, folks. Two of the leading contenders for this year's Mars Maryland Five Star at Fairhill, presented by Brown Advisory. And it is certainly going to be a brilliant competition. Um, Wishing Harry and Liz the very best of luck with their final preparations. And do stay tuned for the next episode in the Inside Maryland series, which is coming your way, listeners, very soon.